Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. So, as she mentioned uh, before, my name is Yusuke Miyake. Uh, my social account is Monochrome Megane. I am a researcher of internet and operation technology, as well as a web developer. So, let me introduce the relation Go and me. So, I am a Japanese gopher who loves writing OSS using Go. My popular repository is here. The Platinum Searcher is a fast grep tool. So, and I am an organizer of the local Go community in Fukuoka, Japan. So, we held Go conference 90 summer in Fukuoka on July 13. Uh, which was two weeks ago, uh, 200 gophers in Japan gathered and enjoyed 30 sessions. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, this is our conference gopher. Uh, he has ramen, uh, which is a Japanese famous food on, on his head. So he looks good, I think. <laughs> Okay, today I'm here to talk to you about optimization for the number of coroutines. My talk has five parts. I'll start by talking about why there is a need for optimization for the number of coroutines through the introduction and background section. After that, I'll introduce my proposal that optimizes the number. Uh, using feedback control. And I will evaluate the efficacy of the method. Finally, I will conclude about the possible and some issues uh, of the method. Uh, to begin with, let's speak to my experience of performance tuning of my OSS tool. I am developing a fast grip tool named the Platinum Searcher. Uh, one day, I conducted a measurement of the optimal number of coroutines to achieve good performance. So, the Platinum Searcher uses many coroutines to search string matching to pattern from files. So, I measured performance while bounding concurrency using a buffered channel as a semaho. So here is the result. So the x axis represents the number of coroutines. It is log scale, log scale. And the y axis represents the speed up of processing time against the sequential processing. The result shows 8 or 32 coroutines make performance good. This is 2 or 8 times more than the number of CPUs. However, measurement in different environments showed different results. The result shows 16 coroutines make performance good. Uh, this is 2 times more than the number of CPUs. But I found that more coroutines cause performance degradation because in this environment, the real-time virus scan process was running at the same time. So the process turns system core of op opening files slow and consumes CPU resources. As a result, performance is degraded uh, when searching for many files at the same time. Besides, there are other results. When the real-time virus scan process stops, four coroutines made performance good. This is half time the number of CPUs. I don't know how many the optimal number of coroutines. <laughs> so currently, the platinum searcher is bounding concurrency using the number of CPUs, namely, I am choosing a safer way, but it isn't the fastest. So that concludes this part of my talk on my experience of performance tuning. 
achieving both speed and stability, we have to decide the optimized number of goroutines through our experiences and continuous tuning. And in most cases, the, the environment in which the program is tuned and the environment in which it will be executed is different. Thus, I'd like to consider optimization for number of goroutines without depending on environments. Background. In this section, I will organize the issues about design of concurrency. I'm going to organize these issues in the following order. Uh, let's start with the first, which is the complexity of concurrency. Then we come to the next, which is the contribution of code to solve the com complexity. We will find an approach to solve the remaining issues lastly. In this slide, I will organize the relation of concurrency and complexity. We introduce concurrency to improve performance. Concurrency brings our application good performance and complexity because concurrency is often considered as compared to uh, simple sequential processing. Uh, this figure shows uh, the common issues of concurrency. We have to consider efficient thread management from a parallelism of view and we have to avoid race conditions, and we have to synchronize memory access, and we have to design to be scalable. Like this, we are dealing with many issues to improve performance. Then I will organize the contribution of goal to solve the complexity. This is one of the reasons why we are interested in Go. Go hides some complexity uh, because Go has rich features that support concurrency. For example, we are freed from managing, managing thread by runtime schedule of Go. And we, we, are also, uh, we also can avoid race conditions by using a channel. In other words, Go decouples between your code and complexity of parallelism. In this slide, I will explain how Go's runtime hides the complexity. This figure shows uh, Go's scheduler workflow. Go's scheduler has three basic concepts. G is goroutine. M is OS thread, P is a processor, uh, P handles multiplexing some goroutines onto some OS threads. So we can think of goroutines as application level threads. So OS threads behaves like a worker for goroutine uh, using a LAN queue. What is important is P uses a smart scheduling strategy called a uh, work steering algorithm. Therefore, P efficiently schedules available goroutines onto OS threads. Go's runtime automatically does these. So we don't need to consider the complexity of parallelism. In addition, Lightweight goroutines make Go's scheduler more practical. Creating a goroutine is cheap because a newly created goroutine is allocated only 2 kilobyte stack. Switching a goroutine is also cheap because goroutine has uh, only minimum context. These points show that many goroutines can run at the same time. As this practical runtime gives the illusion of parallelism more than the actual number of CPUs, or we don't need to consider the 
complexity of parallelism. Finally, I will organize the remaining issues and find an approach to solve them. Due to go hide the complexity of parallelism, we can focus on concurrency issues in our application. One of them is the design of the number of concurrency. The reason is that the number of concurrency affects the performance depending on the characteristic of the application. Certainly, the cost of generating and switching Goruchin is very cheap. On the other hand, when tasks on, uh, when tasks on Goruchin use shared resources, the upper limit of shared resources become a bottleneck. Therefore, in this case, it is necessary to find the optimal number of concurrency to improve performance. But the design for the number of concurrency is difficult because the optimal number depends on app environments and load conditions. In addition, in most cases, the environment in which the program is tuned and the environment in which it will be executed is different. Thus, I'd like to consider optimization for the number of goroutines without depending on environments. In order to achieve this, it's desirable for the number of concurrency to be determined dynamically and be controlled rapidly by detection the bottleneck on running program. Proposal. In this section, I will introduce my proposal that optimizes the number of concurrency. The proposed method's goal is here. The optimal number of concurrency to be determined dynamically and be controlled rapidly. To begin with, let's speak to the basic idea of the method. So at first, it increases the number of goroutines to performance target. After that, it stops increasing the number of goroutines if it meets the performance target. After a while, it attempts to decrease the number of goroutines. If it fails to meet the performance target, it backs to step one. So we have two issues to solve the realization of the idea. Uh, first, selection of performance metrics. Next, finding how to control rapidly and continuously. So in the following subsections, I try to realize a pro proposal while solving these issues. So in this subsection, I will consider performance metrics that are without depending on application characteristic. So in the basic idea subsection, I was assuming that there is a performance target. It's desirable for the performance target not to depend on resource type uh, from task use uh, because different applications have different bottleneck. So for example, I.O., uh, capacity of memory, and processing load due to the external process. So if we find an ideal performance target, it will allow us to use the proposed method in as many, as many applications as possible. I think that CPU usage or throughput is suitable for the purpose. So gold scheduler turns blocking tasks into as CPU bound as possible by switching tasks continuously. Thus, I use the CPU usage as the performance target. But the performance upper limit is different for each application. In other words, 
we don't know the actual value of the target, thus it is so it is calculated on running. At first, it sets the target value high. It increases the number of goroutines to performance target. If it doesn't meet the performance target, it regards the point as metrics upper limit. After that, it gradually adjusts it to the new upper limit value. So that concludes the, this part of my talk on performance metric. Uh, the summary is the following. Uh, the proposed method uses CPU usage upper limit as the performance target, and the value is calculated on learning. Okay. In this subsection, I will consider how to determine, determine the number of concurrency rapidly, continuously, and accurately. In the previous subsection, we defined performance metrics and the dynamic value. Next, we have to consider how to determine the number of gong routines to meet the target value. In the basic idea subsection, we increase the coroutine one by one, but it has to deter determine rapidly, uh, determine rapidly, continuously, accurately, to adjust the number of coroutines to rapid changes in the actual environment. I think that feedback control is a good way to meet these conditions. In this slide, I will explain the basis of feedback control. This figure shows the structure of a feedback loop. There is a system with input and output. The output is sent back and compared to the set point. To calculate, a, uh, in order to calculate a new input, the error is deviation of the output from the set point. The controller calculates how much to increase or how much to decrease based on the error. Feedback control applies an automatic correction continuously, determining set point and identifying suitable input and output is important. Instead, feedback control does not need to know the detail of the system. I think that the robustness of feedback control is effective for rapid changes in the actual environment. In this slide, I will explain a controller uh, used frequently. Uh, as I mentioned before, the job of controller is to calculate the value of new input based on the error. PID controller applies a correction rapidly and accurately. The controller has three sub-controllers inside. The output is combination of its proportional, integral, and derivative subcontrol. Now, I'd like to look at the strategy of each subcontroller. The proportional control output is proportional to the error. Uh, namely, a large error will lead to a large adjustment. KP is the control again. The integral control output is proportional to the integral of the error over time. The output becomes a cumulative sum of the error uh, if it is a computer implementation. So KI is also gain. Uh, the I controller deal with 
the small error that the P controller loses its effectiveness. The derivative control output is proportional to the derivative of the error. The output becomes the amount that has changed since the previous time step. Okay, oh, it is computable implementation. Uh, KD is also gain. So that concludes this part of my talk of basic of BID controller. The controller is intended to take the system closer to a set point. However, the set point has to be de determined beforehand. In the proposed method, the value of the set point is calculated on learning. Now, I'd like to consider the structure of the controller to meet these conditions. So this figure shows the structure of the controller of the, of the proposed method. This controller has two nested control loops. The inner loop is the PID controller, uh, which we have learned just before. So this, the, uh, the inner loop's input is current CPU usage and its output is the number of goroutines. The inner loop attempts to increase goroutine until CPU usage upper limit, which is a set point. However, the value of the set point need to be calculated on learning. The job of the output outer loop is to calculate this value. The outer loop's input is current CPU usage. It is same as uh, inner loop. So, and its output is a new set point of the inner loop. Namely, uh, the inner loop's set point is changed by the outer loop's output. The outer loop behavior has been mentioned at the performance metric subsection. When CPU usage reached the upper limit by many origins, the outer loop begins to use its value as a, a new set point. In the current implementation, the outer loop sets a new set point when CPU usage changes significantly because God's scheduler attempts to consume CPU resources incessantly by switching Goruchi. Namely, CPU usage stays on the upper limit in most cases. Therefore, I figure it would be easier to detect change points in short-term observation uh, than to detect stability in long-term observation. Uh, indeed, the design for the controller is pretty hard. So the current controller version is 11. Okay. If you have an interest in, interest in it, uh, let's conversation about during this conference. conference. So that concludes this part of my talk on dynamic target controller. Now, we should be able to determine determine the optimal number of goroutines rapidly, continuously, accurately. Finally, I'd like to consider how to bound concurrency with a determined number. In this subsection, I will explain about bounding concurrency dynamically. Oh, this is a Go code that appeared after a long time. So we often write such code to bound concurrency in Go. We usually use the buffered channel as a semaphore. In this example, the buffer for the channel is three. Therefore, only three goroutines run at the same time. 
on the other hand, in the my proposal, the optimal number of goruchin will be different in every iteration of feedback loop. However, we cannot change the buffer size of the channel later. Therefore, we need a dynamic semaphore for the method. This figure shows the elastic semaphore. Uh, this elastic semaphore provides weight and signal operations as the same as semaphore. Weight operation decrements the value of the of the semaphore variable. If the new value of the semaphore variable is negative, it is blocked. Blocked. Signal operation increments the value of the semaphore variable and increment limit changes upper limit of the semaphore variable. The value of limit is determined by the feedback controller in the proposed method. This elastic semaphore ensures the atomicity of these operations. So this semaphore is not strict because it allows that goruchins more than the upper limit run temporarily. For example, 10 goruchins are running when the upper limit is 10. After that, if the upper limit turns 5, 10 goruchins are still running uh, until they finish uh, their uh, each task. Oh. Of course, generating new goruchins is blocked. Therefore, a long-term goruchin, like a worker process, is not suitable for the elastic semaphore. Fortunately, generating goruchin is cheap in Go, so we can generate it each time. Okay. Short term, short term goruchin is suitable for the elastic semaphore. So in this subsection, I will explain Kaburaya as the implementation of the proposed method. As I mentioned before, the goal of the proposed method is here. I'd like to determine the number of concurrency dynamically. I'd like to control the number of concurrency rapidly. For the purpose, firstly, we decided to use CPU usage upper limit as performance metrics. The value is calculated on running. Secondly, we decided to determine the optimal number of goruchin using the metrics. The value is determined rapidly, continuously, accurately using feedback control. Finally, we decided to bound the concurrency using the number. The concurrency is bounded using elastic semaphore dynamically. I am developing this implementation as OSS named Kaburaya. The URL is here. Uh, Kaburaya is the name of a Japanese arrow with a hoist. So this code is the usage of Kaburaya. It is very similar to the code of bounding concurrency with buffered channel. Kaburaya new sem specifies the period for goal, uh, feedback control and creates a new semaphore. We can use wait and signal like uh, uh, send or receive uh, to uh, from channel. Mm. Kaburaya changes the limit of semaphore variables automatically and continuously. So we don't need to 
calls the increment limit operation of elastic semaphore. So lastly, if the task finished, we have to stop Cabrera uh, to stop the feedback loop. So that concludes this part of my talk on the proposed method and uh, its implementation. I'd like to speak about the, about the evaluation of Cabrera. In this, sub, in this section, I will explain the evaluation of Cabrera. There are six patterns of environments. I evaluate the efficacy of Cabrera in each environment. Uh, there are three contents. Uh, speed up of processing, uh, CPU usage based on time series, and uh, limit of semaphore on, based on time series. I found a good point and not so good points in each environment accordingly. At first, I will explain the, this environment and the task. In this environment, the Platinum Searcher runs on Mac OS with a real-time by scan. Uh, the number of CPU is 8 and the memory size is 16 GB. Uh, Go Max Prox is set to 8. The graph represents performance against the number of GoRoutines. The X axis represents the number of GoRoutines. It is log scale. The Y axis represents the speed up of processing time against sequential processing. The result shows 16 GoRoutines make performance it's good. This task is more degradation of performance uh, due to increased GoRoutines. Next, I'd like to take a look at the experimental result of Cabrera. Oh, this is a good pattern because Cabrera achieved both speed and stability. Oh, these figures show the result of the evaluation in the environment. The number of the left graph, which is 11, represents the median value of GoRoutine number determined by Cabrera. As a consequence, Cabrera let processing time six times faster than sequential processing. In the light graph, uh, there are three plots. Uh, the blue dash line represents the set point of CPU usage. The blue line represents the actual value of CPU usage. And the green line represents the number of semaphore determined by Cabrera. In this environment and the task, Cabrera found good set points and adjust numbers within an ideal range. Cabrera was able to avoid performance degradation by determining the minimum number of the semaphore to meet the performance metrics. As a result, not the best, but it achieved a good speed up. Namely, Cabrera achieved both speed and stability. This is also a good pattern. In this environment, I stopped the real-time virus scan process and ran the platinum searcher. The result shows four GoRoutines make performance good. This task is less degra degradation of performance due to increased GoRoutines. So, in this environment and task, Cabrera found good set points and adjust number within the ideal range. Uh, please pay attention to the blue dash line in the light graph. This shows that 
the feedback controller continued to set a new set point when CPU usage changed significantly. As a result, Cabrera adjusted the number of semaphore within a good range. Hmm. Not the best, but it achieved a good speed up as few concurrency as possible. Unfortunately, there is a bad pattern. This is the same as the previous environment, but the number of semaphore continued to increase. Green line. Okay. Because Kabraya failed to reset the set point. Therefore, actual CPU usage was always lower than set point. The cause is the range of change rate is too large, too big. Uh, it is used as a condition of determining set point. So I have to tune the parameter in order to improve the controller. Okay. This is not so bad pattern. Okay. This environment, uh, the Platinum Searcher runs on Linux. Uh, CPU is 4, memory is 4 gigabyte, GoMax proxy is set 4. So the result shows 8 or 32 gorgeous make performance good. This task is less degradation of performance due to increased coroutines. Okay. At the end of the period, the number of semaphore increased due to the failure to reset the set point. The cause is the same as before. Mm. So I have to tune the par parameter uh, it range of change rate. Uh, here is another task. The task uses the memory of a shared resource. In this case, the memory size is four. Me uh, task's memory size is four megabyte. Many concurrencies will cause starvation of resources. So better concurrent is 512. Mm. This task leads to more degradation of performance, uh, maybe swap out uh, due to increased goal chains. The number of 63 represents the median value of Goruchin number determined by Cabrera. Uh, Cabrera let processing time three times faster than sequential processing. So Cabrera found good set points and adjust number within the ideal range. What is important is that it avoided the starvation of resources. These results show the good set point keep an ideal number of semaphore. Okay. This is also good pattern. Okay. Yes, good pattern. Yeah. Cabrera found good set points and adjust numbers within the ideal range. At last, uh, I will show you an interesting pattern. I changed memory size to 400 kilobytes. The, the environment is the same as before. When the number of the semaphore is 16, it seemed performance reached the limit. But more goroutines made performance good. Perhaps better concurrent will be over 1024. The number of left graph which is 29 represents the median value. 
So Cabrera rate processing time two times faster than sequential processing. The results show Cabrera solved this task with a local solution. Suddenly, Cabrera found a set point and adjusted the number within a range, but it didn't reach the upper limit of performance metrics. So keep 60% GPU usage. Uh, so I think that Cabrera has to explore the set point aggressively when the set point is too low. In this slide, I conclude experimental results. Cabrera finds a good set point and adjusts number within an ideal range by feedback control and elastic semaphore continuously. On the other hand, we found some key factors to improve Cabrera. The most important is the prediction accuracy of the set point. The improvement will avoid that the number of the semaphore is too much or too less. And finding optimal parameter is also important. Based on my experience, I got good results when the gain of the feedback control is zero, uh, from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 and range of change rate is 0 0.3. However, I think that we have to tune the parameter as necessary. I expect that there is a solution in the related researches of feedback control. Okay, this is conclusion. I propose the Cabrera to control the number of goroutines without depending on the platform, runtime, and current load. Experimental results show possible and some issues of Cabrera. In particular, improvement in detecting performance upper limit of the task is important. In the future, I will also consider the application to auto scaling of cloud computing. Okay, uh, this is appendix. So here is the difference. If you want to learn more about Cabrera, you can jump to the link. Uh, but some text in Japanese. <laughs> Try to read. Okay. The go go fast in the slide was drawn by Kate Kawamoto, which is my friend. So they are so cute, I think. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs>